some nutty stuff. And I recommend that you follow Rita on Twitter, uh, Mark as well, Matt as well. See, we love everyone here. But Rita particularly uh, at the moment is hooking into American politics where you found this one today, that there is the University of Chicago has said that people studying English will also have to be studying black studies in order to be able to qualify to even be part of their courses in the coming academic year. What's going on with this? Yes, they're only admitting people who want to study uh, essentially critical race theory, which is such a toxic uh, doctrine. Um, and uh, this is the English department. This, uh, it is just completely um, undermining the quality of, of education and the type of people who are being permitted to, to study in that department. Uh, but this is what's happening among, uh, in campuses across America and even in the UK, where the woke mindset is bringing in segregation. There's black-only areas and non-black areas. It really is almost like a comedy skit if it wasn't happening for real, that you can be so woke that you start thinking segregation is progressive and, and is a way to engender equality and, and inclusiveness. Uh, but that's what's happening and, it's, and when it starts in campuses, these kids will eventually graduate and they'll be in the corporate world and that same toxic doctrine will be uh, fed out in, in, in corporate world as well. It's not just public institutions anymore that the left have, have captured. It's very much private institutions too. And, and, and Mark Latham, we talk about this so much, about sort of how piss weak the corporates are at the moment. But also, uh, if we want to look back to, we can, we can save ourselves the Royal Commission into where did it go wrong. What people in the 90s or the early 2000s used to roll their eyes at, uh, about, about the hairy armpit brigade over in the arts department and the stuff that they were talking <laughs> about, well, that, of course, they, then got mainstreamed and imported into lots of other different academic disciplines. Then those things ended up getting moved into the bureaucracy then moved into uh, the, 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 uh, the accounting firms that, of course, walking away from the financial crisis in the late 2000s, decided, oh, don't look about us as auditors. We are here to be social auditors. And then mm -hmm. on and on it goes. So that's why I mentioned this tonight, because what seems as crazy story, one, one university in the United States, well, we know they'll copy it here and the flow on effects will be pretty damn obvious, won't they? Well, that's right. You know, to some extent, the corporates are like useful idiots. Uh, they're following the pattern set in the United States, primarily out of universities. But we've got this in Australia. In, in Year 7 English at Maitland High School in the Hunter yes. Valley there, um, they study Black Lives Matter and allegations of racial profiling against the police. And they write answers under the banner of uh, learning English. So this stuff is already in Australian schools. And quite frankly, it does come out of the, um, uh, the curse of postmodernism uh, that's run through the university sector. And I say to people like Matt Canavan, whatever you can do to smash postmodernism in the university sector is a great service to our nation, uh, its intellectual capacity, um, uh, its attention to our civilizational values, and we need more of what the government did in defunding some of those uh, arts degrees and making them uh, uh, less subsidized in, in the system because uh, postmodernism is anti-science, it's anti-educational, it's polluting the minds of, of, of young people, and I, I regard uh, its destruction as the number one public policy priority for our country. But, Matt, you... I mean, look, I was going to ask you, you've been around a Cabinet table, but, of course, you're not able to tell us about those things. So, in and around government, how often does this go from the conversation you might have with a fellow senator at lunch to actual action inside, ministers telling bureaucracies, no, this stuff cannot move from the kooky bit of the campus to the mainstream of the uh, bureaucracy? Oh, look, it does happen sometimes, uh, particularly when you get home from... If you spend too long in Canberra, like a week or two or in a, in a big stretch... <laughs> Uh, things can sometimes start to make sense. You think, oh, yeah, you know, the, the National Energy Guarantee, that, that you know, that you get it all explained <laughs> to you and, and you get across the detail. You think, yeah, yeah, OK, I get it all. And then you go back, you go back to, to your own electorate and, you know, people uh, have no idea what a neg is and they just blow your head off, right, saying, what the hell is that? How's that going to improve my life? And, and that does sometimes and often does actually does force change. So it's really important you have that connection. And I look, I think Trump is going to win this election and win it well, uh, primarily because he's in touch with the middle class of uh, the US. Uh, you know, the, the big issue over there, and, and like here now, post-COVID, is how, who's going to protect my job? Uh, uh, how are we going to get back on our feet after all this is over? 
and Trump's got a record to stand on on that on that front, and he's not going off on tangents uh, as Biden seems to be. So if he focuses on the economy, focuses on protecting working class jobs, working class lifestyles, he'll be right.